All right, so this is day one of my new series on 30 days to better modeling in SketchUp. Also, remember this is day one of my quest to pass SketchUp and subscribers by SketchUp's 3D Basecamp conference. So I'm already starting to feel the pressure because 55,000 subscribers in 60 days is a lot. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it if you would. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the whole point of this series is to give you kind of a process to follow to learn how to use SketchUp. So we're gonna have 30 days of modeling exercises um, that are going to teach you different principles about 3D modeling. So it's very simple, follow along for 30 days, you're going to be substantially better at creating 3D models in SketchUp by the end of it. I will be making the example files available for download at the sketchupessentials.com slash 30 days. Now one other thing, I decided I'm going to be teaching this series in the free version of SketchUp. Now if you're a pro, pro user before you take off, um, this is still going to be super valuable to you because basically all of the keyboard shortcuts for the tools that we're going to model within SketchUp are pretty much the same. So I'm going to be telling you all of those. It's going to be easy to follow along with. So if you use the free or the pro version, you're going to get a lot out of this. Um, it's just going to be based in the free version so that we can make sure that we help the most amount of people with their 3D modeling. So to start off our table, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to model it upside down just so that we can see what we're doing. Um, you could also model it right side up and then orbit around. Remember that if you have a three button mouse, you can click and drag your middle mouse button in order to orbit. That's gonna be same on the desktop and the free version. And so to activate the rectangle tool, you're going to tap the R key on your keyboard. In this series, we're gonna use a lot of keyboard shortcuts. That's because it is substantially faster to model with keyboard shortcuts inside of SketchUp. But then what we wanna do is we wanna model out our top of our box, right? And so what I wanna do is I'm gonna tap the up arrow key. Notice when I do that, that's gonna lock this to the blue axis. That means that this is going to model this on the same plane. So if I was to tap like the left or right arrow keys, notice how it's gonna lock that to those axes. We wanna lock this to the flat axis right here. But then we're gonna click. Notice how I'm single clicking. I'm not, uh, I'm not clicking and dragging, I'm just single clicking. And then I'm gonna type in a value of we're going to say 48 comma 48. That's going to draw a 48 inch by 48 inch table right here. And so what we've done is we've drawn our rectangle. Well, now we need to give it some thickness. So to do that, I'm going to tap the P key on my keyboard, right? So I'm going to click here, move my mouse up, and then type in a value of three quarters, or you could type in 0.75. That's going to extrude this to a thickness of three quarters of an inch. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna take this and I wanna make it so that the faces aren't gonna merge with the other parts of our table. So to do that, I'm just gonna click and drag a selection box right here. Then I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna click on make group. So now we've grouped this and we have our tabletop. Well, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna draw the apron that goes on the inside of this. There's a few different ways that you could do this. You could double click in here, tap the F key to activate the offset tool like this and offset this in. That's one way to do that. Um, another way to do that is you can add guides using the tape measure tool. So if you click on the tape measure tool, and this is going to be the case in the uh, pro version as well. If you click on the tape measure tool right here, that's gonna give you a little tape measure inside of your scene or inside of your 3D workspace. Notice how right now there's a little plus button next to that. That means that this is in create guide mode. Notice how at the bottom it says control equals toggle create guides. What that means is that means that we can use this in order to add a dotted line in here or a guide um, in order to set where we want something to be. It's kind of like snapping a chalk line if you've done construction before. If you don't get those, just tap the control key on your keyboard. Don't hold it, just tap it in order to activate this. And so in this case, I'm gonna say that my apron is going to be, we'll say six inches in. So what I wanna do is I've single clicked on this edge. Notice how now this wants to draw this guide. I'm gonna type in a value of six, right here. And I'm just gonna do the same thing on all four sides. So six, six, six inches right here. So now what I've done is I've used guides to mark out where I want this apron to go. And so now I'm gonna activate the rectangle tool by tapping R. I'm gonna single click and move my mouse. I'm gonna click again right here. So what that's done is that's created a face in here. And so now I need to take these edges and I need to offset them inward in order to create the thickness 
of my apron. Well, in this case, we're gonna assume that this is gonna have a thickness of three quarters of an inch. So I'm just gonna type in a value, three quarters, and hit the enter key right here. And then you can go ahead and you can delete out the extra face that's in here like this just by hitting the, um, hitting the delete key when it's selected. But now I just wanna push pull this up. And in this case, this is going to have a length of we'll say four inches. So we're gonna type in a value of four and hit the enter key. So what we've done is we've extruded that up so that now we have an apron for our table. And so now you can go ahead and you can erase these guides and you can do that by tapping the E key on your keyboard to activate the eraser and then just click and drag along here in order to erase out these guides. So now we're good there. We want to take this whole thing and we want to put it in a group. So we can click and drag across this like this to select it. And then I'm just going to right click and I'm going to put it in a group. So now we don't have to worry about these um, intersecting with each other and the faces messing each other up, right? We've just got our tabletop and we've got our apron as two separate groups. Well, now we need to add the legs. And so this can get a little bit complex depending on how complex you're trying to make your table, right? So in this case, I'm not trying to make this super complex. What I wanna do is I just wanna draw a rectangle right here by single clicking. I wanna move my mouse in this direction. I wanna type in a value of 1.5 comma 1.5. That's gonna draw a rectangle that's an inch and a half by an inch and a half like this. So now we've got the leg in here. And what we wanna do is we wanna push pull it up to this point. So we're assuming that this is going to be completely flat at this point right here. Well now what we wanna do is we wanna add a little bit of taper, right? And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna push pull this out and then we're gonna scale the end like this. So just as an example, you can see how um, if I was to scale this in like this, it's going to scale this all the way around here. However, notice how we're gonna have a problem because this needs to be flat until it hits this point right here, right? So what we wanna do is before we push pull this up again, we wanna tap the control key with the push pull tool active. So in this case, if I tap the P key to activate the push pull tool, we're gonna to extrude this face, but notice if I tap the control key right here, I get this little plus. The little plus puts us in what's known as create new starting face mode or create new face mode. Well, if I do this, notice how now, if I move this up like this, it's creating a new face off of this top. So instead of moving the face that we had when it extrudes this, it's creating a completely new face. Well, now if I was to scale this in like this, notice how this stays flat until it hits this point right here. So what I wanna do is tap the P key tap control, and then I wanna extrude this up. Uh, we'll call it 24 inches. So I'm gonna type in a value of 24 inches, and let's say we want this to be a little bit higher, so I'm gonna push pull it out another, another six inches. So something like that. So now we've got our first leg of our table, but we wanna add a little bit of a taper, right? And so we've created our table leg and we'll come back to this in a second um, and finish off the taper. But before I do that, I wanna go ahead and I wanna create copies of this that go around the table. So to do this, I wanna select this whole thing and then I wanna right click. And remember how before we selected make group for these objects down below? Well, in this case, we wanna use a component. So we're gonna click on the option for make component instead. And so when we do that, notice how it's gonna pop up this window that's gonna allow us to name this by typing in a value in the definition. So components have more information associated with them than groups inside of SketchUp. And so I'm gonna type in a value of table leg. Uh, we're gonna leave all of these off and we're gonna click on okay. So this is now a component um, inside of SketchUp. Well, what, what's cool about components is when you create copies of them, any changes that you make across one component or the other are reflected in all of them. So let's start by copying this leg over. And what you might do is you might do a control C and a control V and place it. I don't actually like that because it doesn't give you a lot of control over where this object is placed. What I do instead is I use the move tool in what's known as copy mode. So if I select this table, I can tap the M key 
I can tap that control key and notice how when I tap control, I get a little plus next to this leg right here. That means we're in copy mode. So if I hadn't tapped control and I was to click and move like this, notice how it's gonna move this object around. However, if I tap the control key, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna put me in copy mode and it's gonna create a copy of this object. So then I can hold the shift key to lock this to the red axis and I can move my mouse until I'm over this point right here because I know this point is aligned with the bottom corner over here. So now if I click, Notice what that does is that places this exactly where I wanted it. Well, now I wanna take both legs and I wanna do this again. So to do that, I'm gonna select them both, tap the M key, I'm gonna tap control on the keyboard to make sure we're in copy mode. And then I'm gonna click on this corner right here. Well, notice how with both of these selected, it's gonna create copies of both of them right here. Well, then I can hold the shift key, move my mouse and I can click right here. So now I have a table with four legs. Well, remember how we made these components and we wanted to add some taper to these legs? Well, what I wanna do is I wanna double click into one of them. And so notice how if I double click into one of them, that puts me inside of the component and allows me to actually edit the geometry that's inside of the component. And notice when you click on these faces, something interesting is happening. What's happening is we've got this kind of like shaded area in here like this, showing that we have something selected. And so what I wanna do is I wanna select this face and I'm gonna tap the S key right here. And then I'm gonna single click and move my mouse. Well, notice how when this moves, those other components are also moving because they're instances of this table leg, meaning they're gonna take on any changes that I make to this one. Well, in this case, I wanna tap the control key to go into about center mode. And in this case, I wanna type in a value of 0.75 and hit the enter key. So when I tap the control key, what that does is that makes it so this object is scaling around this central point right here. So now if you look at this, I've got a table in here with legs that actually taper inwards like this. So then we're just gonna take this table, select it, and then I'm gonna tap the Q key to activate the rotate tool. So the rotate tool is gonna to allow me to rotate anything I have selected. So in this case, I'm just going to single click on this point. And notice how the rotate tool changes colors based on the face that you have it over. You can also lock it to an axis by tapping the left, right, or up arrow keys. So in this case, I'm gonna tap the left arrow key, single click on this corner. I'm gonna move my mouse out and click on this corner. So I've set a base point and a rotation point, and then I'm just going to rotate this 180 degrees, like this. And so from here, we can do a lot of things, but I'm just going to right click and make it a group. I'm gonna move it up so that it's aligned with the central point, and we're good to go. We now have a table model. All right, so you made it through the first video in the series. I will link to the next video on this page. It's not gonna come out till tomorrow, but once it's out, I'll link to it. Leave a comment below, let me know how it went, and make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the exercises coming up in the next 30 days.